Today I wanted to talk with you about the importance of having a stockpile, not necessarily being a prepper. If you have seen my deep freezers, then you know that I have got quite a bit of meat and all kinds of things on hand for when we need them for a few different reasons. We have dealt with shortages since the start of the pandemic and even now we're noticing some things that just are not readily available. So things like cream cheese, frozen chicken nuggets, and even chicken breast. We've seen those things in my area. I know you all have seen even more where you're at. So I think number one, it's really important to have some things on hand in case of a shortage. You never know when you're not going to be able to find something that you use on a regular basis. So I like to have things for that reason on hand for about a month's worth of groceries. Now that doesn't mean that I always have a month's worth of everything that I use, but I have a pretty good amount of items that I can throw together a meal for my family without needing to go to the grocery store in case there's something like a shortage. Another time that a good stockpile really comes in handy is during inclement weather. Blizzards here in Tennessee is just not a time to go out and drive and get to the grocery store. I know people make fun, there's memes, there's things that talk about run out to the grocery store and grab your milk and bread because it's gonna run out, but it's true. We don't have plow trucks coming out constantly like we did up north. The mountains are not a place to be driving when there's ice. If you can have some things in your freezer, in your pantries, ready to go, that way you won't have to worry about whenever the blizzard comes the roads are literally not conducive for the kind of weather that we sometimes get here. Another time that I find it really amazing to have a stockpile in your freezers or your pantry is whenever you have financial difficulty. Sometimes that happens because of being laid off of work, maybe there was a pay cut that happened, or you got sick and you're not able to be at work for a time. And unless you have a large savings set aside for something like that, then you're going to be hit with a need to cut your budget somewhere. And I think most of us realize that groceries, food, it's like our biggest expense aside from our mortgage probably. So if you can cut your grocery bill by not needing to go out for most of your items that you're needing, say you have enough meat in your freezer for a month, you have enough dried goods in your pantry for a month, then that really cuts down your need for grocery shopping down to just the basic dairy and produce, which can save you a ton of money in a time of need. Now my last and most common reason for having a good stockpile in my freezer and in my pantries is because ultimately it saves me a ton of money. So whether I have to spend less money out of necessity or I just want to spend less money, I do find that it is very important to purchase things when they're on sale and stick them into my freezer for a later date. This has not happened overnight. I didn't just run out to the grocery store one day and decide to stock up my freezers and have a month's supply of meat in there, but I have gotten onto a pretty good rotation where the meat you see in any given grocery haul is usually not for the meal plan that we are going into, but actually the meat goes toward the following month or even months to come. Because if I can purchase enough meat and have a stockpile, then the meat that I purchase goes for the future and for the current week I pull out of my deep freezer and then I have a good rotation of things getting used and restocked. Now it may not seem like that big of a deal but actually I am saving hundreds and hundreds of dollars by shopping this way. So if you're thinking, okay, but how can I do this on a budget with the money that I have? Well, that is why I'm making this video because I wanna share with you how I do this to spend less and still create more. My first tip for you is to keep in mind that this is going to take some time. My freezers did not start out full and it has taken years for them to get to this point. Instead of focusing on filling up your freezer from start to finish, just pick up one extra pack of meat or one extra thing for your freezer every time you go into the grocery store. If you're able to spare an extra three to six dollars on something, it all adds up and will make a big difference in your stockpile. 
Meat is probably one of the more expensive items that we can stock up on, so I wanted to give you a few tips on how to save money on the meat first. Now you know I love a good clearance deal, so my first suggestion is to keep your eyes out for some reduced clearance stickers at any of your grocery stores, whether it's Walmart, Kroger, a small grocery store that you normally find higher prices at, even going to a discount grocery store where they purchase leftover meat from a grocery store and then mark it down for you. So checking out those options first is always my number one suggestion. My next suggestion is to watch the sale ads because you can get meat up to 50% off, buy one get one free without a clearance sticker. So of course, this is the time to stock up on meat whenever you can get two for the price of one. Now, if you don't want to wait for a sale on meat, you could, of course, go and purchase a quarter cow, hog, things like that, and stock your freezer with incredible cuts of meat at a very deep discount. However, it is an investment, it's an upfront cost, and it's not always as easily attainable for most people. So whether you're getting your meat discounted with clearance deals at your discount grocery outlet store or just the weekly ad specials where you have buy one, get one free, that is the easiest time to stock up on meat at a great price because you can buy one for now and save one for later in your freezer and not have to have spent a penny more than you would have if you had just bought enough for the week. But what about if you're not finding deals on meat? I mean, some places it's hard to find meat in general and the prices are going up too. So my suggestion in those cases is to not just look for deals on the meat, but always look for deals everywhere in your grocery list. Whenever you can save money on one item, that savings can then go towards stocking up on other things. Even if you're paying regular price for chicken breast, you can still stock up on that with the savings that you got whenever you buy cheese on sale or the goldfish were on sale. All of my local grocery stores put out clearance items all throughout the place and it's not just in one designated area and whenever you're saving money on each of those little items it all adds up to be able to take care of the purchase of one extra pack of meat for example. So if you're saving a dollar on the spinach and you're saving 50 cents on the loaf of bread put all of that savings together and buy something that you can to stick into the freezer for later. At the end of the day, your investment into your future is probably going to require some sacrifice today. So take a look at your grocery list, see some things that you might be able to erase off of there, and then choose some items that you can stock up into your freezer instead. And even purchasing things that are generic, store brand, is a really great way to save those pennies and dollars and use it towards something for your stockpile. I've done a whole video on how to spend less even during inflation with your groceries. And if you wanna check that out, make sure you look at the description box for that video but one big way is to just buy the store brand they have so many items that are just as delicious as the name brand and it will save you a ton of money So hopefully this gave you some inspiration on how you can stock up your freezer on a budget to spend less and create more. And of course, until the next video, I'll see you in the comments.